Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I look at the fun, the most fun card images in the 1991 Upper Deck Baseball set. With, with images, there's, there's always been a tradition of fun images if a card company has had the opportunity. And by the early 90s, there was a bigger interest that was put into images themselves in card sets. 1990 was kind of the year that woke the industry up. So by 1991, it was a really big deal to make sure that you were getting the most opportunity that you could from images. So instead of tops just going out and getting a shot and putting a shot on, which was kind of the way that it worked to an extent, now this the card companies were trying to get together a collection of images to really choose from in order to make sure that they got cards that really carried the spirit of the card set and were the most fun. And so for, th for 1991, there were a lot of card sets that were starting to do this. And Upper Deck definitely needed to kind of wake up with, uh, they, they had a fresh new card design and they were trying to take over the card industry. So getting really good images was a really big help for them. And there were a few cards that definitely did come through. But like I said, it's not that, that fun card designs were invented here in 1991. There had always been cards like, it seemed like every single year there was at least one card of a baseball player blowing a bubble of, of bubble gum. So they, they were fun, but we just saw a lot more opportunity with that in 1991. And so in Upper Deck, we get to look at some of the really fun images they had, starting with Daryl Hamilton, who is, well, blowing a, a bubble. This, this kind of image could easily get old, where it's just like, oh, another one? But it's actually kind of fun. Every time I come across one of these, it's like, oh, cool. And then immediately follows up with, yeah, again. But it's not like a disappointment. It's like every year you got to have that one thing. It's like watching some corny Halloween movie or something like that, where you just got to go through that ritual. That's kind of what it is with the bubble gum. It's always kind of fun, but it's the same thing that you see every year. And then with Dave Winfield, in the case of Dave Winfield, it's just a really, really nice portrait, which was actually quite rare prior to 1991. We would start to see more of this, but what I find interesting is I normally think of Tony Gwynn when I think of nice portraits. For some reason, Tony Gwynn just always seemed to have a couple of really nice portraits on cards just about every single year. Usually that was on the back of a card, but still, he had a tendency to make sure that nice portraits were taken of him. Well, in this case, we got Dave Winfield in a really, really impressive portrait. And I'm, I'm not sure why they went with this, but it looks really good. Now, for me, one of the most fun cards in this entire set is the design or is the construction of Comiskey Park. This is kind of a, this is really a promotional shot is really kind of what it is. Not like an advertisement, but it was a, a, an event that was going on. And so it was a specialty card. It was not a player card. And normally they would do this where they would get rid of all of the border except for the white on the outside and just have it as a straight shot. But here, the way that the card is entirely designed like a player card, that's what makes this really kind of cool to me. I mean, I love seeing the baseball stadium with the dirt on the ground and the old timey jerseys. Those are, the, it, it's a really cool shot. I love all of that. But for me, what really makes it work well is the fact that it's still designed the way that all the player cards are. So it's not designed to look special, which means it almost kind of sneaks up on me in a way. It just has a really cool feeling like this card is supposed to be a part of the team set. And I love the way that that all comes together. So I love the shot period, but I wouldn't really put this in necessarily as one of the great images just because of the, the unique nature of it, except for the fact that in this case, actually the way that it's presented makes it really look quite cool. So I definitely got to put it on here, but also in terms of really cool special event like shots, we also got to go with Nolan Ryan. And this is actually not a special card. This is his card. This is the way that it looks. He didn't do anything special, except for the fact that he was in his early 40s and was still absolutely smoking it. This, the, the career of Nolan Ryan was phenomenal, mainly in the end of his career, because this was a guy who's charging through his 40s, and he was at the top of his game. I mean, he was smoking batters left and right, and it was amazing that he was still right up at the top of his game, even in his 40s. 
we'd had George Blanda back in the day, a, a real man who had earned his, his keep on the football field. But for Nolan Ryan, there was something different about it because he was still one of the game's top pitchers. And we'd never seen anything like that. And really, at the end of the day, we, we never quite did since then. With, with all due respect to Tom Brady, I see the Nolan Ryan story as even more impressive than what Brady has been doing because Brady gets kind of babied, but Nolan Ryan was out there. I mean, he was really taxing his body his entire career and he held up for a long time. So with all that in mind, that's what we were thinking at this time was it was incredible to watch this guy charging into basically into his mid forties and still just an absolutely stellar pitcher with some incredible speed on his pitches. And so the card here, it looks like it, some farewell tribute that was definitely not the case. He was not ready to walk away. So I love the way that this card comes across as just really something special about him, which is very much the way that he was at this time. So I love how that comes across. Now with Benito Santiago, the case with this card is, I love how the bat bends. That's, it's really cool to see that. It's, uh, it's an optical illusion that just kind of fits into the way that the shot comes across. But where I love this shot so much is the fact that it basically is like a curve of, his, of the action and the way that his body is, is positioned. You don't normally see a shot where the bat actually looks like it's bending, like it does in this shot. And it really carries through in a, in a wonderful way. So I love, the, I love the action, the dynamic action that's caught in this shot. And just there's kind of a poetry to how the how it all curves. And then we've got Mike Gallego. And in the case of Mike Gallego, this is one of those action shots where a baseman is hovering over a base runner. These shots aren't entirely common because it's not the most common event in baseball, but it's always fun when you get one of these shots where the baseman is actually in the air and you've got a lot of dynamics to what's going on. It's not the best case of a baseman flying over the base runner, but it's still, it, these all do look really cool. So I love the way this one comes across. Could be better, but hey, I mean, this is a really cool card. But then we've got Ken Griffey Sr. And in the case of Griffey Sr., this is, to me, this is one of the best cards of the Griffeys that I've ever seen. Because it has both Ken Griffey Sr. and his son, Ken Griffey Jr., on the same card. There are a lot of cards that do a really good job of presenting both of them or all three of them or however the, however the family is shown. The thing about this though, I think that this is really one of the best, if not the best card combining both father and son because there had been a lot of cases of fathers and sons or brothers or family members together in baseball in some facet just a few years earlier. Cal Ripken Jr. and his brother Billy were both playing for their father, who was the manager at the time. So family in baseball has long been a, a standing tradition, but we hadn't seen a star like, well, not so much a star, but, but a, a well-respected veteran like Ken Griffey and see his son come in as a superstar and the two of them get to play together. That combination was really fun to watch. And this card captures exactly that whole spirit of it because in the case of this card, it's not just that they're both on, on the card, it's that as Ken is walking past his son, he's patting him on the chest in a teammate-like fashion. That's the whole thing. It's not like the handing of the torch or anything like that. These guys are just teammates. They're hanging out and they happen to be really good friends and you just see all of that where it's normally the camaraderie of straightforward teammates, well, this is now familial. And I love that, just the way that it comes across where they really do feel like they're just hanging out on the baseball diamond playing a baseball game. The way that comes across, I love this card. I think it's just, it, it, I, I, um, yeah. You're starting to get the picture that I really do like this. And then there's Joe Slusarski. And I am so proud that I said it right on the first take. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and mention that, that yes, I did pull it off. And did I practice? I'm going to pretend that I absolutely did not. With Joe, whose name I'm not going to try anymore because I got it right and I'm just going to soak all that in. Here they used a technique that Upper Deck was starting to use around this time that is cool, where they have three shots all in sequence. 
and they overlay them so that you get to see the action. Now, this is not the best example of it. In fact, it's a big muddled mess. You can hardly see him. You really do need to look on the back of the card to see who, you know, see what he looks like. But it doesn't really matter because even though it's a muddled mess, it pulls your eye in. And I love how the dynamic quality of all of the action comes through on the card. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm not even bothered by the fact that it is a mess. I don't care that you can't really see him because you just see just how much motion they're able to capture in these three frames. Really cool. But let's face it, could it be better? Well, Ricky says yes. The Ricky Henderson card is, is um, well, considering how fast Ricky moved, I have a feeling that it, this was just a normal single shutter and it just happened to capture him in three different phases. The card looks great. It's well balanced. Obviously, the fact that it's laid out horizontally really helps a lot. But you also get to see how much motion he's going through in not so much instantaneous as much as in this short span of time, you get to see how much he does really shift. The card looks really cool. And this is, again, I don't think this is the best of these three phrase, three phase images that Upper Deck did, but it's right up there. It really does hold up well. What's really fun about the Ricky card though is the fact that on the back, it's still an action shot. And on the back, it's actually still a really good action shot. So he's got it going on both ends of the card. But as much as I love this card, I got to hand it to the Kurt Gibson card as the best card in this entire set. Because here, that cloud of dust is a really awesome opportunity to just see the action in place. And the fact is that there's a cloud of dust and yet he's actually standing up. So it makes you wonder if he was kind of sliding but not sliding all the way down or if there was so much dust it took a while for it to settle down or just how how far away you were to see how much dust there's a lot going on with this with this card and i also like the fact that he's not really he's not he's not prominent on the card but you do get to see the back of his jersey where it says gibson which helps you to read exactly who you're supposed to look at so it really does help fully balance out the card in fact I don't even notice the umpire in this card because when I look at the card, I see the cloud of dust that pulls me right up to Kirk and the two of them go together. But the reason I like the way that this card comes together is the cloud of dust is fun, but it leads me to wonder about the story. With Mike Gallego up in the air, you know, that's, do you care whether the base runner is safe or out? You don't really, because you're, you're so caught up in the motion of the game. This is the kind of thing that happens all the time. But in the case of the Kurt Gibson card, because of the action, it makes it feel more immediate. And so for me, I am actually wondering what was going on. Was he, was he safe? Um, you know, exactly what went into this. So I love the way that this card comes across in a way that is beyond what any of the other cards in this set did. It is still a huge improvement over what had been done in the past. They had a lot of different fun things or really cool images in this card set. But it's not the most fun card set that was done in 1991. Not at all. So I want to look at, at the Topps baseball set. That one's really good. But I'm also going to be looking at Upper Deck Football. That is a card set that it's not the most laden card set, but it is still a pretty good card set. And so I get to look at what they did in baseball, and then I get to look at what they did in football. And in football, they did have some fun. They had some really cool cards there as well. So that'll, that'll be another look. But for baseball, I think this is pretty much the upper crest of what they had in the set. So let me know in the comments below what, you, what your take is on all of this. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching.